Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to today's live. Um, today, we are talking about the best AI tools for marketing. So we haven't chosen a small topic for today. Um, it's going to, there's a lot to share. So uh, I'd love it if you jump in to the webinar. Um, we are actually sharing this to our group, so that'll take a moment for us to share, but we should be sharing it in the Marketing Mastery for Education group, um, just in case people have been missing the emails and they want to catch this topic live. Um, as you join in, I'd love for you to say hello in the chat. I've got the chat bar open here. Um, and uh, I want you to share your favorite AI tool and um, basically put it in the chat and give a little bit of a description of what your favorite AI tool does and I'll be reading them out through the live so we can share the tools that we use as marketers. Uh, there is no shortage of AI tools out there. Every single day we're seeing a new tool come out. Um, some of it is hype. Um, but some of it is incredible. So today we'll be going through the incredible tools that you can use. Uh, let me know when um, you're in, in the webinar by liking the stream and commenting below, just letting us know your name and where you're from. I'd love for these to be interactive and for you to ask your questions as you go. Um, I'm not going to claim to be an AI expert. We've been exposed to a lot of tools as an agency. Um, some are good, some are bad, and we're going to just share our knowledge with you uh, based on where things are at at the moment. Um, I'm not a futurist. I'm not going to be discussing the future of AI or anything to do with robotics um, because that's not my specialty, but there are some great marketing tools that we can use. So um, if you want to just post your name, where you're from in the chat, um, and we'll get started in maybe less than a minute. Um, and then also share your favorite AI tools. So I think a lot of people actually struggle to know what is AI and what isn't AI. And a lot the AI term gets thrown out a lot as well. We've seen a lot of tools um, saying that they're AI when they're not actually using the AI algorithm. So there's also a lot of hype out there and I'll help you to navigate that. Um, thank you for everyone that's already connected. Um, if you need to, I know that schools in particular sometimes have trouble connecting to YouTube. It's just the fun of you know being on a managed IT system. But if you can, log into YouTube. Um, that way you can chat and you can participate and ask your questions and also share your wisdom as I go and I'll read it out as we go. Okay, so um, let's get started. So today we're going to be talking about the practical tools that we can use for AI, um, AI tools we can use in marketing. Uh, and um, I'll be sharing with you also how you can AI proof your career. I think I think the panic has died down, but especially in the agency world and in the marketing world, people thought that AI was going to kind of replace them um, and that uh, they'd become redundant. Um, that's not true, and I'll show you why, um, and then we'll go through some great tools. So St. Augustine's College in Sydney says, hey, Mara, it's Taya. Hey, Taya, how are you doing? Lovely to hear from you. Lovely to have you um, on today. Okay, so um, AI, uh, Leanne Dib says, um, Leanne, she's from MacArthur Anglican School. She's relatively new to AI and mainly use ChatGPT, especially to help uh, generate, generate ideas for copy. Great, that's awesome. Um, I think that's where most marketers are. We've kind of dabbled and we haven't actually gotten into it. So today I'm hoping to point you in the right direction. But I like the way you said it helps you to generate ideas. So you're not saying I write all my marketing copy in ChatGPT and I copy it from the platform and paste it on my socials um, because that's how you shouldn't use AI to help you. Um, it's not going to do the whole job for you. But it's a great assistant. That's what I'd like to kind of highlight in today's training. So um, AI has either been overhyped or underhyped. Some people think it's going to take over the world and they'll be sitting back on the recliners or that it's going to do everyone out of a job. 
Um, and so I'll just let you know where I stand on things. I'm not there. Um, I understand there is um, a lot to be discovered. Everyone is learning where we're at with AI in the AI world. Um, but I personally think that you know, um, AI has a role to help us to work more efficiently and that our roles are going to change because of AI. Um, and so what I see a lot of marketers doing with, um, you know, as you scroll through your feeds and you see this AI tool and there's amazing marketing reporting tools and marketing tools, and you can generate all your content and uh, creatives and copy. Um, and then they kind of sign up to all of these programs and then they realize it's kind of not what it promised to be. Um, and maybe it's because they don't really understand the problem that they're trying to solve. So before implementing any software into our organizations, we need to understand the problems that we're trying to solve. And we want to simplify how we solve those problems instead of just layering on software solutions that don't talk to each other or work within our system. Um, and so we don't want to become a slave to the tools. Um, we want the tools to work for us and to simplify our day to day. And so hopefully today is going to help you to say that, uh, to do that. So if you haven't done already, say hello, um, like the stream, um, give your name in your comments. Um, if you want to paste links to your favorite AI programs in the chat and share what they do and how you use it, that would be really helpful for other people, other marketers as they jump on the stream afterwards, just to have a look at what you have to share and say. Okay, so let's start off by looking at what do we mean by, by saying AI? So um, AI, there's a few learning models that we can cover. As I said, I'm not going to be talking about anything to do with robotics. I'm not a futurist. I don't understand the bigger picture um, abilities of AI, and I'm learning just as you are. But I'm going to be covering the three learning frameworks that do affect our day-to-day -day marketing, and I do understand a little bit about those. So the first one is natural language processing. Um, AI that can help us, that can process natural language. And this is to do with copy generation, um, sentiment analysis, um, translation and text summarization. So all those AI tools that help us to write copy, to understand what the copy is saying, summarize it, that sort of thing. That's the learning, natural um, learning processing um, side of AI. Then you get machine learning. So machine learning is the algorithms and the models that allow the computers to learn from the data and to make predictions. So this is like analytics um, and, and um, looking at different copies and deciding which one to go with. Um, social media feeds uses when they decide on which ads to show you. Um, so that's the machine learning side of AI. And then you get computer vision. And so this is understanding AI's ability to understand visual information from the real world. And it involves tasks like image classification, object detection, facial recognition, image segmentation, and scene understanding. And we all have seen like the Google Photos ability to recognize individuals in your photos and to categorize them, um, or the ability to select an object from a graphic design and to remove that object from the photo. So that, that's computer vision AI. So those are the three main um, learning frameworks that, that help us in our marketing day to day. And that's what we'll be covering today. So what are the types of applications that AI has for us? So I'm not going to go through the exhaustive list, but for marketers, um, our main tools that we use are AI assistance. So this is um, assist, um, like, uh, applications like Siri, Google Assistant, Amazon Alexa. Um, these are typically available on smartphones. So if you have Siri on your phone or Alexa on your phone, um, smart speakers like the little dot and the echo, um, and then also websites in general also have these uh, applications available. And they help us with day-to-day -day tasks like answering questions, setting reminders, and providing basic information. My favorite to use is Amazon Alexa, the shopping list. Um, we have an Alexa in our kitchen. 
and um, I'll say, hey Alexa, can you please add bread and milk to the shopping list? And it syncs between my husband and I and whoever is at the shops, we can go and check our shopping list. So it's a great little tool. I also use Amazon Alexa to discipline my kids it's because I'll say, hey Alexa, set a five minute timer for when my kids are in time out. And then Alexa's alarm will go off when they can come out of their room and we can have a little chat. And um, so Alexa's my little assistant in bringing up my kids as well. And I find it very handy um, for cooking, alarms, showing me my recipes, that sort of thing. It really does help me. Uh, the next um, tool and application we can that uses AI are search engine. So Google being all those main search engine engines actually use AI algorithms um, to understand queries, to interpret what the intent is behind a search, and to also deliver relevant search results based on that intent. Um, and so you don't actually interact with the AI directly, but the search engines are actually using these AI algorithms to help you deliver your relevant search results. I'm just going to have a quick look at the chat just to see how everyone's doing. Um, okay, Hayley uh, from Parkerville. Hi, Hayley. Um, she's been using HyperWrite instead of ChatGPT as an, the output feels a little more human to me. Great. Um, yes, so ChatGPT isn't the only tool that we can use for writing, and I'll go through that. And also like choosing our writing application based on the goals of what we're trying to do. So there's specific ones for marketers. Um, but have a look at HyperWrite um, that Haley recommends. Thanks, Haley. Okay, so uh, the next application, so social media platforms actually use AI as well, um, and in many different ways. Um, so they uh, they use AI to recommend relevant content based on your interests and engagement and what you've been doing on the internet, as we all know. Um, and it targets our advertising for us, but they also use AI algorithms to actually moderate their content. And so, I mean, who hasn't been victim of wrongful uh, penalties on Facebook where they say, hey, this, this content is Damaging, they get it wrong, you lodge a complaint and they come back and they say, sorry, we made a mistake. So that is actually AI and it's a perfect example of how AI isn't perfect and a human is going to be needed to um, filter whether it made a mistake or not. So you also, the next type of applications, you get AI applications, AI powered applications. Um, there's a consumer facing applications that are integrated with AI capabilities, um, such as uh, to give us functionality for things like image recognition, language translations, virtual trials, personalized recommendations. So there's a, there's a whole variety of AI, a whole industry of AI applications that have been launched out there. And um, examples are like photo editing apps, language learning pl uh, platforms, e-commerce, AI assistance, that sort of thing. And then you also get AI in smart devices, as we discussed. Um, so smartphones, home devices, wearables, our watches, um, and autonomous vehicles, which I won't be covering today. Um, but um, And this is like uh, functionality, AI functionality, that, like voice recognition, predictive text input, activity tracking, and autonomous navigation. So that's just to give you a very large scope of what's uh, um, involved in AI and what we're talking about. But as marketers, I want to give you practical tools um, that we can use of, of, that we can use in our day-to-day -day marketing. And so I've broken this up into different categories of um, how we can use AI. And the first category that I'd like to talk about is AI for writing. So this is uh, probably where we are going to use AI on the day-to-day. -day. And yes, ChatGPT is great to help us in our, our research, in putting together some copy, um, but there are there's a few options out there. So let's go through a few options. 
So, um, first of all, Grammarly. I mean, Grammarly has been around for absolute years. Um, and I don't know who hasn't been um, on the Grammarly bandwagon for some period of time. Um, their uh, application is progressing and advancing as new technology becomes available. So if you haven't been on there for the last five years, it might be worth checking them out again. But Grammarly actually uses AI algorithms for grammar and spell checking. It will help you with your style and tone, tell you how easy your copy is to read. Um, it will help you with your vocabulary um, enhancement and give you new um, words, different words to use. Um, it can also help, which is really handy in today's world, with plagiarism detection. Um, and also help you to set writing goals um, like word count or readability scores and that sort of thing. So a, a Grammarly is probably one of the biggest if, and most well-known AR tools for your writing. Um, secondly, ChatGPT. And so as Hayley said, she finds ChatGPT a little bit robotic. And I totally agree. Um, ChatGPT can be great. Um, but you really have to feed it step by step. Um, and so you have to work alongside ChatGPT to improve the copy. And you can't, you literally can't just copy and paste it and think that, that you've done a great job. Um, we did a social media post where we were like, guess the ChatGPT copy. And everyone kind of spot on within the first three seconds. Everyone can spot ChatGPT copy. And we have clients who've come to us from other agencies saying, um, they've, they've literally written our copy with ChatGPT. We're not happy um, because people want to have a human connection behind their content. So I don't recommend just cutting and pasting from ChatGPT, please. Um, the thing that you need um, to be successful in using ChatGPT to help you write your copy is that you need to be really clear on your audience, the pain points, um, what you really want to touch on because ChatGPT is terrible at touching on pain points and making human connections. So you're going to have to add that into the copy. Um, ChatGPT is just great at spurting out information and bullet points and contextual information and you are going to have to add the human element to it. Um, and you also need to be clear on what the driving action is that you want people to go to. So you really have to orchestrate the whole machine and the mechanism rather than trusting ChatGPT to do that for you. Um, so um, Hayley mentioned she likes HyperWrite. Great. There's another tool that's specifically for marketers. So um, Jasper has had a variety, three or four different names, I can't even remember, um, over the last few years. But Jasper was launched before ChatGPT as an AI writing assistant and everyone thought it was great, but then ChatGPT was launched and they had to differentiate. And so they've gone for, um, this is writing copy for marketing materials. And so both Jasper and Copy AI will help you to write your copy across the whole campaign in one kind of focus point where chat GPT, you'd have to say, okay, write me a brochure. Okay, write me the social media ad. Okay, write me the web page, landing page. And you'd have to kind of deal with it in sections and blocks. Um, copy AI might be more suited towards building out a campaign that has a common thread across the campaign. So both Jasper AI and Copy AI are specifically for marketing, they also they, they've kind of niched it down to really understand the principles of marketing, what makes good copy, um, what the calls to actions are, how you appeal to your audience and pain points and that sort of thing. And so, as marketers, we may want to choose the those tools. Um, so, as I recommend, choose a tool that's specific to your objectives. Okay, so AI tools for graphic design. Um, just open up to chat. Uh, this is where AI gets really powerful and nifty. There's so many amazing day-to-day -day tools that we can use. Um, and this is not doing a graphic designer out of the job. Let me just be clear. Graphic designers have a very specific st skill in being able to put something together that's aesthetically pleasing. And just because you have all these amazing tools that may make it easier for you, 
honestly, if you don't have that graphic design training, you're going to butcher it up. And it's like having the tools, but not really understanding the design. And so, um, yes, while these tools are great, I think it's still worth going to a graphic designer. And you know what? They might may be able to be more affordable these days because there's tools that are making it faster for them. I'm not sure, but like... Um, back in the day, a decade ago, when I was, you know, maybe more than a decade ago, probably 15 years ago, um, when I was learning Photoshop and how to kind of cut out objects from Photoshop, it literally was a 20-minute process to cut out an object. And we thought we were at the peak of innovation because we could cut out our objects and drop shadow it and put in different backgrounds. And it would be like a 20-minute process. Um, and I'm so jealous because today's generation can just click a button. Um, but yes, we learned it the hard way. Um, so um, let's look at some tools for... Um, graphic design, AI tools for graphic design. So Adobe Photoshop. So Photoshop has several AI powered tools. Um, one of them is Content Aware Full. So what you can do is say if you have a subject sitting in front of a bookshelf, but you want to extend the photos a little bit more to the right, um, you can just select it, say Content Aware Full, and it will fill the rest of the image with more bookshelf and make it look very natural. Um, so this is a super handy um, for us if we want to say, for example, we want to use a image on our header and you know how it is a very wide um, and we can kind of extend our photograph a little bit to be used on a header image for our website. Um, there's image generation tools. That's the example that I stuck in the PowerPoint here where you can generate an image, so put a Jaguar in the image, and you can do that by just typing in the prompt of what you want to place into Photoshop. Um, I haven't, I'm not going to include how to do these things in this presentation because that would just take forever and probably the how would change by tomorrow. But have a, if you are interested in any of these technologies, just note it down and have a Google on how to do these things. Um, the next AR tool that you can do is select subject. So you can actually select a subject from an image easily by just clicking on them and saying select subject. Um, and then you can also have neural filters, which helps you to take the tone and the feeling of an image and then apply that to like another image. So you may have a photo, a desert scene, and you can say, we'll do this in a Picasso style painting and it will kind of generate a new um, image for you. Um, Adobe Illustrator. Um, if, for those of you who don't know, um, Adobe, Adobe actually offers the Creative Suite. It's a monthly subscription. Then you, you get all of the Adobe Creative software packages in that suite every month. It's really affordable. Um, it's probably an essential um, for a marketing team to, to use the Adobe suite of, of products and services. And so um, Adobe uh, Illustrator is really um, handy for uh, 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 well, illustrating, but also image processing. And so you can recolor your artworks using AI algorithms, um, and it will so kind of suggest color variations based on the selected artwork. So, I mean, it's... The AI is actually starting to assist those people that don't have an eye for design by suggesting color palettes and tones and patterns that will suit the feeling of the photo that they share. Um, so that is a very nifty tool. And then Adobe Sensei offers a, a free form gradient tool where you can um, kind of select and create more natural feeling gradients based on customized shapes. Um, and, and it's very handy. Adobe, Adobe Premiere Pro, which is for video editing, has features like auto reframe. Uh, so it will automatically um, reframe the videos to focus on the subject, which is very handy. And uh, again, when I learned video editing 15 years back, <laughs> it was a half a day project just to edit a short clip. Um, and in today's tools, I mean, no one's spending longer than 20 minutes editing a video, which is just amazing. Um, and um, you can also do auto cleanup, um, scene detection for easier editing. There are amazing tools, um, recognition, video recognition tools out there for you to use. One of my...
<clears throat> Sorry, let me just quickly stop going forward. I'm just going to go back to the design. So I just want to cover, um, before I forget, um, Canva. Canva is amazing, an amazing intermediate tool. Uh, it may be perfect if you don't have a graphic designer on your team. It may be the perfect tool where you can get a graphic designer to create templates for you. Um, and I want to share some of the amazing features that Canva has to offer for, for you. So, um, uh, I mean, the Canva background remover. Um, so you can just select upload a photo and go to background remover and it will automatically remove the background for you. This is incredibly handy, but you know, it's not the sort of background remover tool where you can create a billboard ad um, where the image is going to be blown up to a massive size and you can think that it's going to be perfect. If you're going to be making a billboard ad, you really do need to be using the Adobe Suite. Uh, but it does a great job for social media posting, um, low resolution sort of photos. Um, you, again, you may want to think about using a more professional tool if you're having it on your website banner or something like that. But it's, it's great for day to day. Um, and also mock-up creation. So if you just want to see what it's going to look like with the background removed and you cut out a few students and you place them on top of your copy, um, you can create the mock-up and see what it's going to look like and then give it to a graphic designer to or go into the Adobe Suite to do a better job for you. Um, you have the Magic Resize, which is an amazing tool. So if you have a square Instagram size creative and now you want to make it into a real size creative, you just go into the Magic Resize tell it the size that you want and it will, based on the content in your design, resize the design automatically for you. Very handy, again, saving you 20 minutes of resizing the creative um, and it's yeah, done in the click of a button. Um, it's got photo editing abilities um, and it's such as uh, uh, automatic photo enhancement, colorizing your images, image croppings, uh, filters that you can add over your image. Um, you can automatically select the subject. Um, you can select automatically select the text out of a design. Um, there's a lot of visual recognition AI that's helping you with your Canva designs there. And then uh, one of my favorite tools is the brand kit. So when you're in Canva, you can upload your brand um, logos, fonts, icons, colors, and it's called a brand kit. And what I do is I just bookmark that um, for the team. I add the team to that brand kit, and that's all that they can use to, to design um, any images and templates. But the really nice thing is that if you go and select a generic Canva template, um, and then you can um, go into your brand kit and automatically ask it to switch between different colors that are selected for your brand only. And so it'll give you different varieties of options and designs based on your, your design colors. So, so it may be like a dark blue background or a white background with orange icons or blue icons with a white background. Um, and it will just kind of give you different variety of options. And it's amazing just clicking that button to rotate through a few different brand color options. Um, what totally different designs you can come up just by changing the colors and the fonts and the sizing. So that is um, one of my favorite applications, especially as an agency, we, um, we have all of our clients' brand kits uploaded and it just helps us to make sure that everything we design is on brand for them, following their fonts, their colors, and gives us variety in how we apply those fonts and colors across different designs. So have a look at that. Um, and then you also get image generators. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of um, the image generators that are out there. For me, in, from, from a marketing perspective, not a creative, like having fun outside of work, but from a marketing perspective, some of the image generators are just a bit too surreal and out of worldly for us to really apply in our marketing unless we're going for a special campaign. And there are some schools that have been able to generate the background of the images and um, that sort of thing with image generators. But typically it's more for the fun 
um, campaigns that are outside of education marketing. Um, maybe if you want to generate fun backgrounds for like e-commerce or like makeup brands would use it often and clothing brands would have different backgrounds that are generated in fun ways to showcase their products. But in the school space, it's a little bit limited, but who knows, who knows what can happen. Right, AI for our day to day. So we all need an AI assistant. As I said, I'm not going to be covering robotics or anything like that. Um, so I'm not going to be talking about how you can get an AI robot to, you know, assist you as a third marketing uh, coordinator on your team. So we're not there yet. Maybe next year. Who knows? But um, let's talk about day to day tasks and processing. So. Um, First of all, ChatGPT is actually a great tool. Um, I find it really nifty for um, subject research where I'm researching a topic. Um, you understand that people aren't going to remember bullet points of facts, right? You know one or two facts about a topic, but then if you want the comprehensive list, um, then you can always go to ChatGPT and, and, and to give you lists and research. So. Um, ChatGPT is a great research tool. I absolutely love it for that. Um, you can also um, give it prompts to maybe give you ideas for blog posts or you can do some SEO research. I must say ChatGPT as a tool for SEO isn't amazing and there are better tools out there which we may cover. Um, but it's, it's a tool that you can use to research um, what's out there. There is actually an app called Max AI Me. Um, I found it incredibly useful. And basically what it does, is it just brings the open AI platform everywhere. Wherever you are on the web, it's going to give you tools and functionality to help you. Um, and so um, it will say, for example, if you're on a web page and it's a massive landing page, you don't have the time to read it. What you can do is you install the maxai.me Chrome extension. Um, there's a free version, which is limited in terms of how you can use it. Um, or there is a paid version. I think it's like $20 a month. Um, and you can summarize a web page when you open up a PDF. It's going to give you an option to, sum to summarize your PDFs. Um, I love the summarize tools. Um, just to help you kind of condense information and like give me the meat of what this is trying to say without me spending five hours trying to read this document or skim it and then missing something. And it only takes like a minute or less, like 10 seconds to summarize a document. Um, and then also it has a tool where it will generate email replies for you. And really it sounds very, um, it sounds like you. It's it learns from you um, and then it, it will sound like you. So you can say, um, reply to Kathy that, I, yes, I'll be there and um, let her know that, I, you know, I may be 15 minutes late. And then it will write the whole email for you in a nice way. Um, so that's a very nifty tool. Uh, there's, there's a lot of um, tools to help you manage your inbox, AI tools to help you manage your inbox. Uh, another uh, tool that we use, especially as an agency, um, and that uh, if you have a lot of online meetings, there's an application called otter.ai, and this helps you with meeting notes and transcriptions. So um, we love the, um, so all of our meetings that we have are transcribed, and there's a bullet point list at the end of our meetings with action items. How handy is that, especially for the work, the line of work that we do. Uh, we'll then go in, fix it up um, in terms of maybe it didn't get the context correct for something. And then we can send our clients a meeting note to say, um, these are our action points. This is what we discussed and this is what we'll be actioning from our meeting. And we can now do that within five minutes after the meeting versus maybe an hour after the meeting when we kind of write our notes and change it and check in on things. You know, so it saves us a lot of time. So that's called otter.ai. I do want to warn you, don't subscribe to their email list unless you're very serious about them because once you're on their email list, it's almost impossible to get yourself removed from the email list. They're very persistent, um, but they're a good tool nonetheless. Does anyone want to share 
um, on the chat any of their favorite day-to-day -day marketing tools um, that you use. Is there anything that I've missed? Um, yeah, there's, there's literally thousands of applications. I've tried so many of them, but I'd love to know, is there a favorite for you? Um, any AI applications that are helping you with your day-to-day? You can just type it in the chat. I want to give you two seconds. The next um, topic that I want to talk about is AI for web. Um, there are amazing AI tools for managing your website. Um, it's just so easy. Uh, in yeah, if I look from where I came from and the hard work that it took, both in the creating a website space, but also managing a website on a day-to-day -day basis. I'm going to go through a few amazing tools with you. Um, what I do want to get you away from is a lot of people think they can just get AI to design their website for you, and you do get these YouTube videos um, uh, for that, that's, you know, kind of like generate a website in an hour. Um, those are exaggerated and they're not for our audience and then you're not going to get a well-structured um, website. What you have to do is work site along the tools. So um, Kaza, Kaza Cross School asks, have you tried Motion for appointments and tasks, etc.? No, I haven't, but I've seen their ads every single day. So maybe I should get on the uh, Motion bandwagon. Um, we use a tool called Monday.com. We absolutely love it, um, but I haven't tried uh, Motion. So Monday.com doesn't use any AI tools. So it integrates with AI apps, but not directly on their platform. Um, I'd love to know who has tried Motion um, and what does it do? How does it help me? I, I, I actually haven't got on that from the ads um, as as far as I understand it kind of integrates between your calendar and your task list um, maybe it helps to organize your time or your day I'm not sure let me know what it does I haven't tried motion and I probably will after this okay AI for website management um, the first thing that it can do is to help you to generate content and so I've got, I've got a little screenshot here, um, but basically uh, there are many WordPress um, visual like builders where you're building out your content that now integrate AI into their platforms. And so I'm just giving you a little example from my website where um, when I'm in the um, WYSIWYG builder, I just click on the little AI button and then uh, there's, uh, you can replace your content, you can rephrase your content, you can lengthen your content, shorten your content, simplify it. And this is kind of just working alongside you. It doesn't mean that you have to go with what it suggests, but I really do find it um, useful. I, sometimes when I'm writing copy, I, I really struggle to write for like a younger audience. That's something I've always struggled to do. And so sometimes I'll say, rewrite this this content um, for a 20 year old or write this from the perspective of a seven year old. And, and it's really good at doing that. Um, yeah, so you can change your tone. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of tools that are gonna help you with your copy. What I don't want you to do is to say, write copy, unless you're absolutely desperate and you have nothing on your website and you just need something, um, which you shouldn't be that desperate. But I would say work alongside it, back up your original content and help improve it and understand, help, your, help the AI to carry the thread through your website and take the people on the journey that you actually want them to go on uh, because um, AI is going to give you very isolated boxed content that hasn't got a thread if you just kind of rely on it um, on its own. Um, GA4 predictive audiences are amazing new introduction. One of the improvements of GA4, I must say, I'm not a huge fan of the GA4 platform, but I think they're really over promised and underdelivered, under delivered, um, and it's, it's basically forced on us now. But one of the um, 
improvements is predictive audiences. So you do need to have larger audiences and, and traffic to use these tools. But what you can say is create an audience of people that are likely to purchase. And you can use those audiences um, in your advertising. So that's a great way to select audiences and also um, segment, segment audiences on your website. Um, chatbots. So chatbots are a great way of attached example here. Um, and so what a chatbot will do, it will go through your content. Um, it can either be your website or materials that you provide like PDFs or Word documents, written content about your business or your organization. Um, and then it will become an AI assistant. So it will help people to navigate your website and so you can say what are the prices of your courses and then the chatbot will respond and summarize that content for the user and it's just a, a really nifty um, content assistant um, to so people don't have to kind of figure out and go through three or four different pages to get the information they need they can just say I want this information and it will summarize it for them very handy and a great way to increase the conversion rate on your website and they can also coin people through to conversion to say well sign up to this newsletter or you know a member of the team will get back to you what's your name email address that sort of thing the chatbot is a great we have implemented chatbots on some school websites we've built a few out um, that helps people um, if people are on their school websites and they're inactive for over two minutes um, it kind of helps them to capture the lead at least and to give them the information that they need um, AI personalization is another amazing tool so it's not directly available in like WordPress and all your website builders but there are apps that you can integrate with your website for personalization and it can be as simple as hey first name but um, there are apps that are out there that can use big data and layer that with the content of your website for like things like the interest and personal um, shopping habits. So say for an example, a um, e-commerce brand that sells men's clothing, women's clothing, ch children's clothing can now start to personalize the content that I see as a 40 year old woman to show me clothes that would be appropriate for me. If that makes sense, um, which is just amazing um, and easily set up and easily managed and done and kept up to date. So that is amazing. And I think the um, our marketing strategies are going to have to get a lot more advanced because if we don't start personalizing our content, we're going to look like we're in the dark ages compared to all our competitors. And so for education marketers, that looks like showing people content based on the age of their children or the um yeah like what the their interests that they've expressed interest on in when they um subscribe to our email list and also just saying hey hi mara um it looks amazing when you personalize your website um and then you can also use image generation not going to be a huge user of this for education marketers but for my other marketers my corporate marketers out there yes image generation is possible on the platform um, where it uh, integrates with stock imaging um, providers and you can say i want an image of a woman on a laptop drinking coffee and then it will find you those images and you can insert that into your website on the back end um, and that's probably available for a lot of us using any visual builders Great. Are there any, um, I hope uh, if I've left anything out, of, well, I have left probably a lot out for um, AI for web design and managing your website on a day to day. If there are any tools, just paste them in the chat. And I'd love to yeah, hear about them. Okay, so next I want to talk about getting the best out of chat GPT um, I think there's right ways and wrong ways to use it um, and basically what we need to do is we always need to train the model um, for co with context okay so we need to let chat GPT know about us before we say write me an ad for a kindergarten to year 12 school um, that you know, has an open day coming up. Um, they, they can write an ad, but it's going to be as generic as 
So what you can do before you write your prompt to get you know what you want out of it is you can say, can I tell you about my organization so that you can use the information to write a meta ad for me? And then what you can do, there is um a tool, a free um website tool that you can use is called to the web.com. And what it does is it will copy all of your that web pages content into just plain text for you um, and so you don't have to go into your website and copy this paragraph and put it in and copy that one and put it in and try to overlay um, like the images and things like that and get that out um, so you can just go to the web.com go to your landing page copy the text from there and then put that into chat gpt and chat gpt will come back and say from what I can see, you're a school that's based here, you offer this, this is your unique selling point, and, and ChatGPT will understand contextually what your unique selling points are. And then you can start to write a prompt for it to write an ad for you. So a prompt, there are essential elements for each prompt, and this is kind of the prompt formula. So you a good prompt would go something like this write me a 200 word linkedin post that uh that demonstrates demonstrating excitement about google's recent analytics update in this week's google search central blog it talks about um talk about the, how it benefits marketers and make it sound professional and casual so you're including the format that you want it's a LinkedIn post that is going to the chat GPT algorithm is already going to start adjusting. Okay, it's a LinkedIn post. This is the LinkedIn posts that work. Um, demonstrating excitement about so it knows, okay, I need to hype up this this these coming changes and these updates. Um, the, these are the updates that you wanted to write about, and this is where the source information is. So I can go look there for additional context. Um, and then the audience is very important. Often people leave out the audience. Who are you talking to? Um, if you want to include in there, um, like Australian marketers, female marketers, marketers, middle-aged marketers, and you can be very specific about the audience. And then also the tone and the style that you want for that post. So that's just a little formula that you can use for your prompts. The last thing, I want to talk about before we finish our AI discussion, and I'll just double check the chat that there's no one else, not there's no else. Um, how to feature proof your career. So, um, last year, um, there were some agencies that thought this was the best thing to happen to them, and other agencies thought they were going to be out of business. And so, we can see we're somewhere in the middle. You know, we haven't all been done out of business. If anything, we're adding more value because our teams are becoming AI experts and we can actually help our clients build um, AI applications and start to use AI in their marketing. Um, and, um, and then there were some people that thought that uh, they were all going to be done out of a job. So if you don't want to, if you want to stay future proof, I would recommend that we stay focused on high level skills. So uh, if I look at my team, what I've deliberately built in them is the ability to plan uh, a campaign. And I don't want implementers on my team. I don't want people to just say, okay, right, I can do Facebook ads. I can do Google ads. No, all of my team is slowly but surely, day at a time, becoming better marketers. They can write strategy. They can think about the big picture. They can advise clients on the latest technologies. They can create content for me. They are becoming high level skilled marketers. And that's the way to future-proof AI, future-proof your career. Because if you just stick to one little niche, I just design yearbooks, that might be at risk in a few years' time, or most of that work will be at risk. And so what you used to be able to charge 100 hours for, you can maybe now charge 10 hours for. And so that's not going to be something that's feasible for you if you're not, um, if you're not yeah, up to date. The next thing um, I want to recommend is that you embrace AI. So professionals know how to use AI to increase their workflows, to improve the way they work, to increase their outcomes and assist them in their day-to-day. -day. Uh, a tech-savvy 
AI user um, is going to be a lot more sellable as a new candidate than someone who has maybe st stayed away from the bandwagon, isn't supportive of AI, and doesn't use any of the technologies and can't say how AI is affecting their industry. Um, I think in your interviews that are coming up, if you're ever doing a career interview, mentioning that you are on top of AI and its capabilities for your niche is um, something that companies are very keen to hear about. Um, and as I mentioned, get out of the implementation zone. Don't just think I do graphic design. If you do just do graphic design, start to think about how can I become an expert at designing um, the whole thing. So how can I become an expert at putting the copy in as well or creating a marketing, a piece of marketing content that's going to actually convert or how can I um, learn about conversion optimization and what's going to work to get people across the line. So it's kind of increasing your skills beyond just the implementation. Um, the future um, employee, em employees are going to be able to solve complex problems. Um, and they're going to be great at lateral thinking. Um, they're going to be able to think out of the box, solve problems for people, understand scenarios and situations, and then use AI to help them in fixing those problems. Great. And that brings us to the end. So thank you very much for attending. Um, if you don't know about, about Robbers Digital, we offer a full suite of digital marketing for schools and so we do brand and strategy, we do social media ads, LinkedIn strategy, we do content posting and social media posting for schools, we offer SEO services, um, Google advertising, media buying, digital billboards across Australia. Um, all of our services are tailored specifically for the education industry and so if you haven't heard about us, we'd love to, to hear from you. Just send me an email at hello at robertsdigital.com.au and um, I can get, book a call with you. Thank you for attending today. It's been a lot of fun. Um, if you haven't done so already, um, post your AI tools that you use in the chat. Um, I'll be looking at the chat after the live and just responding. Thank you for engaging with us. Um, if anyone has any questions, just post it in the chat and I'll be on there after the live today. Thank you.